Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Now that I've been fortified by a strong cup of coffee, my love... Oh, was it too strong, my love? Hush up. Would you mind explaining why you tickled me all night? I didn't. You tickled me all night long. You hardly let me sleep a wink. I was only trying to see if you had a temperature. It felt remarkably like tickling. Oh. Did you think I was going to change my temperature every five minutes? <laughs> if you did, I wanted to be the first to know. <laughs> hey, darling. What? Do you have to go to the office today? I do. Oh. Please get that look out of your eye. Oh, look. I haven't any fever. Did you take it? I didn't have to take it. I've got a little cold in the head, and you're making it into a milestone of medical history. Anyone in medical history will tell you it's best to take care of a cold when you first get it, isn't it? Oh, doctors always exaggerate. It's their business. They have to. Besides, I haven't stayed home in bed since I was eight years old. There's nothing to be so proud of, really, David, the way you look. What's the matter with the way I look? Well, personally, I like you better without circles under your eyes. Oh, David, please stay home. I promise not to bother you. But there is nothing wrong with me <coughs> except a little cold. God bless you. <coughs> Ditto. It's quite a big cold. Oh, listen, stop pretending. I'm only family. Who's pretending? Look, Claudia, I admit it. I'll go so far as to say I am proud of it. Proud of it? In fact, I'm so proud of it, I'd like to take care of it all by myself. We don't have to share in everything, You're you know. the most stubbornest person I ever knew. Most stubborn is as stubborn as stubborn can be. You're stubborner. No, out of my way. I'm all dressed and I've got to rush or I'll be late. You won't be. You're taking a cab today. I am not. I shall walk. It'll do me good. There's no point in my informing you that you're a lunatic. None whatsoever. Will you at least call me when you get to the office, lunatic? I'll give you a complete report on my state of health, my temperature, pulse rate, blood pressure. How you feel will be enough. Hey, here's your overcoat. No... All right, I'll wear it. I don't think I'm going to make a habit of it. No, dear. And don't try to help me on with it. I've been managing myself for years. Don't forget your rubbers. And don't try to help me on with them, either. Say, I'm not going to wear rubbers. Oh, David. Man's got to have some pride. Mine starts with rubbers. Don't look so tragic, darling. I'll be back tonight, safe and sound. David, if you want to come home early, why... Don't... I won't, I won't. Now, stop worrying. Go see your mother. Go shopping. Buy something. Anything. I will. I've been needing a sable coat. My old one's all worn out. Fine, fine. Charge it. Uh, Roger, I'm not too satisfied with the plans of this west elevation. <laughs> oh, that devil. These coals are a nuisance, aren't they? Uh, you look a little feverish. I've got to run up to Redbury tomorrow. Think you'll be up to it? I can manage if you're not. I darn well better be up to it. The only point is, will Claudia be up to it? Is Claudia sick, too? Oh, it's terrible how this flu gets around. No, she's feeling all right, but she thinks a man should fall in bed with a hot water bottle in his arms if he so much as sneezes. That's better than the type of woman who doesn't care what happens to you. And right now, I just as leave Claudia locked me out of the house and smothered me with all this devotion. If I came home at this hour, she'd get panicky and send for the doctor. Claudia will get over it when she finds something else to worry about. Then you'll be jealous. Wait and see. <laughs> oh, stay where you are. I'll take it. Blast. Hello? Oh, hello, Claudia. Tell her I'm out. Tell her I'm dead. No, 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 no. You better not tell her that. Tell, tell her I'm fine. David? Yes, he's pretty good, I think. Uh, much better. He went to a meeting. Yes, he was wearing his coat. No, no, it hasn't hit me yet. Yes, I... I'll tell him you call, Claudia. Uh, don't worry so much. He's all right. Yes, I'm very sure. 
That's very sweet of you. Goodbye. Says she feels safe as long as I keep an eye on you. But quite a responsibility. I wish you'd call it quits for today. You're as bad as Claudia, Roger. All right. I'll duck out now. You know, it's a funny thing when a man is afraid to go home. Especially when it's because he loves his wife too much to tell her that she loves him too much. Now go on, get out of here, and for heaven's sake, button up your overcoat. <laughs> I don't see what people see in turtles. I don't either, but all women seem to love them. Oh, they do not. Well, take your time, folks. Look around. And uh, can I help you, sir? You want to buy a pet? You've come to just the right place. I think you can help me. You helped me before. I have. I don't recall. Well, you sold my wife a dog, a Newfoundland pup, Major, remember? Oh, Major, yes, indeed. Uh, then you are Mr. Norton. That's right. Oh, yes, that Major was a lot of dogs. A shame you had to give him back. Must have near broke Mrs. Norton's heart. Yes, it did. Mine, too. Most ladies aren't up to a big dog like that, but Mrs. Norton, she was. Now, take my wife. She used to favor Canary. Oh, oh. Mind if I answer that? No, no. Go right ahead. I'll, I'll just look around. I'll be back in a moment, and I'll be back with you people in a minute, too. No, Harry. <laughs> Hello. Oh, did you ever see anything as cute as those kittens, Betty? <laughs> you know, one kitten is worth a hundred turtles for my money. Yeah, they are kind of cute. They're for kittens. Don't you like kittens, Eve? Oh, sure, sure. Kittens are all right, but I know who I like better than kittens or turtles both. You do, huh? No. You know who? Can't imagine. You want to know? Mm, I guess so. I'll tell you later. Oh, tell me now. Oh, not in here. Too many people are not. Tell you, honey. You know, it's not nice to do that. What? Start saying something and then not say it. But I forgive you this time. Oh, look at them, Eddie. Do they have blue eyes or am I dreaming? <laughs> They're blue, all right. I wish we could have one. Only one. Someday when we have a big house, I'll buy you a dozen. How's that? Oh, darling. <laughs> Gee, Eddie, I didn't know anything could be so cute. <laughs> look at how they play with each other. Hey, hey, in a minute I'll be jealous of those kittens. Mm, then you better take me away right now. Mm, I think I better. Eddie, could I steal just one? <laughs> Going out stealing things. A fine way to start married life. Come on. Where do you want to go? Mm, let's go right home. Instead of to a movie. Okay. And I'll treat you to a cab. Nothing of the sort. We'll walk and the money we'll save we'll put in the kitten fund. <laughs> it's a deal. You know... There was something about those kittens that reminded me of you. Ah, go on. Uh, uh, ah. Uh, sorry to have held you up, Mr. Norton. Oh, that's all right. Now, since there's big dogs you and Mrs. Norton have a hankering for, I know of a lovely St. Bernard I can get for you in three or four weeks. Now, I can't wait that long. I'll, uh, I'll take one of those small kittens. A kitten? One of these little orange ones here. Oh, Mr. Norton, I distinctly remember Mrs. Norton saying you weren't the cat type. And I don't like selling cats to them who aren't. Well, she bought Major for me. I'm buying the kittens for her. A remarkable woman. From one extreme to the other. <laughs> That's pretty accurate. But I can't oblige you, Mr. Norton. Why not? Not with one of these. Mm -mm. Too young. Hardly seen the light of day yet. Not even weaned yet. Well, tell me, is it a lot of work to raise them when they're not weaned? Oh, worse than triplets. Mm. Kittens to be fed on a bottle are more trouble than fixing a formula. Really? Ah, but you wouldn't know about that yet, or you wouldn't want the kittens. In a week, though, they'll drink from a saucer, just like people. Then I want it right now, today, while it'll still be a lot of trouble. You see, I want it for my wife to take her mind off of things. Oh, dear, still brooding about maid, huh? The gap a dog can leave behind him. I shouldn't do it, Mr. Norton, but since I disappointed you with Major, I'll take the blame for this myself. Well, I appreciate that. Now, which of these kittens do you prefer? Well, they all look the same to me. But not to their mother. Well, you put yourself in her fur and pick me out a good one. One that wants to be pampered. You'd better make it male. Eh? Well, here we are. The sweetest little fella of them all. No, no, no. Don't scratch, Buster. Uh, how about making it two? Ah, oh, now that's a nice thought, Mr. Norton. When Buster gets a little older, it'll be lovely for him to have a brother to play with. But you're sure two won't be too much trouble? Oh, they couldn't be too much trouble. They'll keep Mrs. Norton nice and busy and worried, but not about me. <laughs> Oh, darling, 
darling. Hello. Before you say it, I'm all right. I'm getting better every minute, I think. I called your office and Carolyn said you'd left ages ago and that you felt absolutely miserable. I, I couldn't imagine what happened. I went shopping. Well, let's not stand in the hall. It's awfully drafty. Shopping? What for? Well, not for a thermometer or a hot water bottle, I can tell you that. You've got one in each eye. Darling, come on in and jump into a hot tub. I'll make you hot lemonade. Oh, I detest hot lemonade. David, if you don't cooperate, you won't even be back in the office next week. That's what you think. Here, hand over that box. What's in it, anyway? What I went shopping for. I is it something for me? Now, stop being a trained nurse a minute, darling, and have a look. Well... Well, aren't you going to? Oh, David, you're the most wonderful idiot I ever married. <laughs> going shopping for me because you think I think you're a nuisance because you're sick. Well, that's hardly the reason, but if you won't open the box, I will. All right. <gasps> kittens! Mm, very young kittens. Oh, David, they're so small. Can I hold them? Very carefully now, very carefully. Oh, come here, you little angels. Oh, they're so soft. They, they're just little babies. Hey, listen, I think they're purring. They are. They're kind of cute. Look, David, I can hold one in each hand, like, just like little balls of wool. <laughs> the kitty, 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 kitty. Hey, they're trying to bite me, David. They'll oh, take an awful lot of care, darling. Kitty pushes. I love it. I love it. Actually, these kittens shouldn't have been taken away from their mother. They're much too young. I'm afraid they'll be a nuisance to you. They couldn't be a nuisance to me. I love them already. Well, I'm not oh, sure that you'll have baby. time to take care of them properly. I'll make the time. Uh, maybe I was hasty. Maybe I shouldn't have brought them home. But, David, you did, so it's too late. You see, Claudia, they haven't been weaned. Weaned? Put on a bottle. They haven't? No. I'll wean them. You think you can? Of course I can. You wait and see. I'll, I'll give them some warm milk right away. Well, it's up to you. They're yours now. By the way, they like their milk out of bottles like babies. <gasps> I haven't got a bottle. It's too late to get one, too. Well, maybe a little coffee spoon will do. Good, I'll try it. Darling, I hate to ask you this, but can I can I trust you to take care of yourself for a few minutes just till I get them settled? Take your time, Claudia. Take your time. All sorts of things in the medicine cabinet. Help yourself. And I'll make you some hot tea. Take your time. Don't worry about me. Just worry about those kittens. Give them all the care you'd like to give me and we'll all be fine. Take your time. Dee -dee 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 -dee. We'll all be fine. All story material used on this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. You're weighted down with parcels, and there are two more stops to make before you start for home. Know what to do then instead of wearing yourself and your temper out? Stop at that inviting red cooler for an ice-cold Coke. Then you'll shop refreshed. And go on your way in a brighter frame of mind. Remember, the cost of Coca-Cola for the pause that refreshes is still only five cents. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir... And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>